Roma, Lucas Guerrero. For those who are watching via the internet at iArmyEuroSeries.com and via Telemundi Media, and for those who are listening on the wireless in the digital world of podcast radio, thanks to the Downforce UK network for motorsports around the world. Jake Sanson here in the commentary box, overlooking the starting gantry here at the Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero in downtown Chiva, just outside the city of Valencia, not far from the Circuito Ricardo Tormo, where the world of touring car racing and MotoGP is so beautifully played out every single year. And my goodness me, it's been an action-packed day so far. We started the day in flamboyant fashion with great racing from the X30 Senior, Junior, Mini, and Super Shifter categories. And we've got more great racing on the way. We've had eight races so far. There is another, wait for it, 14 to go. Yes, we've got an imp incredible afternoon of racing ahead of us with some absolutely spectacular racing to come. And I've seen some pretty incredible battles already over the course of today. If you've only just joined us, what have you missed? Well, there have been four different winners from the X30 senior category. Dean McDonald, Sam McDonald, uh, Joe Turney and Clayton Ravenscroft, namely, who have given us some absolutely brilliant entertainment in the first part of the day. Uh, we had some cracking racing from the juniors as well with Alex Lloyd and Marty Boyer picking up the race victories. Before we had another fantastic battle which uh, saw our young Spanish charge in the X30 minis, Miguel Pero Luzaraga, managed to pip Lucas Jack Flushacross to the victory in the X30 minis first heat. And then in the super shifters, it was one man, Kevin Ludi, winning going away despite a strong challenge from Nicolas Rohrbasser over the course of proceedings. And a strong charge to the podium in the third step from Sten Dorian Pinamagi, just holding off the local talent, Carlos Leon. Loads of great racing over the course of the day, and there's still plenty more to come. We go straight in with qualifying heat BC. It's going to be a really interesting battle, this one, as we see the Swedish driver under the Spanish racing license, Robin Norman, take up residency on the front row of the grid. The young man from Stockholm, alongside him on the grid, is Alex Lloyd, who won his heat so brilliantly earlier on in the day. But it will be tough for those two, because they've got the very talented Estonian in third position on the grid, Rimo Katapik, who was one of the fastest over the course of the weekend in fact in this morning's warm-up he was the fastest so uh, he'll be one to watch Zach Ripley on the second row of the grid was very strong in the latter stages of his heat got a little bit wayward in terms of being forced out of position and had to fight his way back but with him being on the second row provided they get a good exit out of the hairpin and the even side are lined up along with the odds he should have a stronger race the second time of asking Lewis Gilbert will be particularly strong here as well the persistence racing driver from Scotland should be pretty strong he's drawn Joined on the third row of the grid by the local talent Hugo Belderomov. So uh, it will be interesting to see what he can do. And we should have some pretty incredible talents over the course of the day. We have got the seniors coming out first, though, I am told. So we will talk about the seniors first. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. My apologies. So the seniors will come out first of all. And it's going to be heats D and E that start the day off. So we will talk about the X30 juniors and their fantastic race battle. But uh, they are coming up a little bit later on. My apologies. I'm still getting used to the timetable. It is the seniors who come out first, of course. And it's qualifying heat D and E, uh, which means it is the Frenchman Arnold Malizia who will be out on pole position. Alongside him will be the Brit Mark Kimber, and both of whom have been incredibly strong in the early stages of proceedings. Uh, then we will have Sam McDonnell, who won his heat so brilliantly earlier on, along with Louis Westover joining him on the front row of the grid. Jordan Brown Nutley and Enrique Bodas Cotes will be on the third row. Patrick Rundqvist and Jorge Carlos Pescador, uh, they will be next from Nicola Beart and Henry Laws of Great Britain, who was uh, rather unfortunately spat out of the side of the circuit on the first lap on uh, turn three in his previous heat. I have a feeling he would easily have been in the top six had that not occurred. Uh, he has got another crack at it though and again rather unfortunately for him he's on the even side. I think he would have preferred to have been on the uh, odd side of the grid which is on the inside line but he will get his opportunity to do that a little bit later on in the day but as long as he's strong and he has uh, got the will of Goliath he will be able to hold his own on the inside line there without too much difficulty. So it should be pretty straightforward for the guys as they uh, get themselves ready. We're racing in about nine minutes' time. So uh, that does give us uh, enough of an opportunity to talk you through the grid in full for the X30 Senior Race. Uh, it is qualifying heat DE 
that we will talk about. And therefore, it's groups D and E that are racing against each other. So let's go through the grid in detail. The Frenchman, Malizia, uh, is going to be on pole position. Arnaud Malizia on pole position, along with Mark Kimber of Great Britain on the front row of the grid. Then it's the Irishman, Sam McDonnell, alongside the Brit, Louis Westover, on the second row. Uh, Jordan Brown Nutley, another Brit going strong in Senior X30, alongside the Spaniard, Enrique Bodescotes. Uh, then we have the Swede, Patrick Rundqvist, alongside the Spaniard, Jorge Pescador. Then it is Nicola Bayard of Belgium, alongside the Brit, Henry Laws, in the top ten. The Filipino star Jacob Ang will line up in 11th position on the grid on the 6th row. Carlos Martinez Escria will be there on row 6 as well. Jason Lockwood and Christopher Sharney on row 7 of the grid. Sebastian Degrand and William Godefroid will be on the 8th row of the starting grid. Luis Beloso and Hugo Var will be on row 9. Matilda Olsen of Sweden starts on row 10 alongside Oscar Palomo. Matthew Gilliland of Great Britain will be on the 11th row alongside the Frenchman Enzo Giraud. Uh, Antoine Perceval from France is there alongside Jensen Brown on the 12th row. Ben Wooldrich of Great Britain lines up beside Isaac Vautinen of Sweden. And then it is Rico Samanautio and Masatoru Wada of Japan. Kira Scott of Great Britain and Rivaldo van der Westerlaken of Holland. Uh, Robin Knutson of Sweden joins the Hong Kong ace Boris Jung. And then Jack Tomalin of Great Britain alongside the Belgian Simon Henrard. So it is a very talented grid of drivers, as we have come to expect with the Senior X30 here at the second IAMI Winter Cup. I still can't get over the fact that last year in the IAMI Winter Cup, there were 58 drivers. Uh, this year, we have 156. Absolutely <laughs> astonishing, isn't it? That is a 300% increase on last year, pretty much. Absolutely spectacular. I wonder how many drivers will sign up for next year's competition. This is, of course, a precursor to the upcoming IAMI Euro Series, which visits four calendar events over the course of the 2018 season, starting at Sabriz in France at the end of next month, before we move on to Marienburg in Belgium in the uh, month of May, and then we move on to the very legendary German circuit, Wackersdorf, in uh, the summer, and then we finish off the season in the second weekend of August at the beautiful Siete Laghi circuit at Castelletto. It is an absolutely wonderful venue, and we're all looking forward to that being the season finale of the IAMI Euro Series. What an amazing spectacle! Spectacle 2018 is set to be, and over the next six months, we'll see five weekends of fantastic international competition with some of the best racers in the world in these four classes. At X30 Senior, Junior, Mini and Super Shifter levels, we have had drivers from all over the world compete, not only from their local country here in Spain, but also nearby Portugal. And we've had drivers from Great Britain and Ireland, France, Germany, Italy, Poland. Uh, we've also had uh, from further afield into Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Japan, America. Uh, we have the Belgians here, there's a Greek contingent. We have the Scandinavians here en masse as well from Denmark, Finland, Sweden and Norway. And there's plenty of great racing talent from all over the international motorsport spectrum represented here at the iArmy Winter Cup. It's been fantastic to see them all, and they're doing an absolutely fantastic job. So, find yourself a nice beverage, get yourself comfy wherever you might be around the world. If you're here at Valencia, get yourself a nice vantage point for the afternoon because we're going to be doing this for the next five hours straight with great racing on the way. And it is going to be a magnificent spectacle for those of you who are sitting at home, wherever you might be around the world, watching via Telemundi Media on IamiEuroSeries.com. I'd get some biscuits out if I were you because this one's going to be a long one to sit through, but it's going to be worth every single second of it. And for those of you who are traveling down the roads, in your car or need to pop out to the shops or something, you can always set up your mobile phone onto Bluetooth and tune into the action via the Downforce UK uh, podcast channel, which is via your Spreaker application on your mobile phone. So you've got access to all of the action for the rest of the day. And if you miss anything and you want to listen back to it on your drive up the motorway, you can always download it from there as well. But there's great race action, and I genuinely don't know who is going to be the ultimate champion in each of the four classes because it is so ridiculously close. To give you an indication, in qualifying yesterday in the X30 senior class, you only need to look at how the grid was separated, how the drivers have been separated. In the senior X30 class, there are 87 drivers, okay? The top 62 drivers were covered by less than a second. 
That is how good the competition is here. It is absolutely astonishing. And I can't think of that many drivers within the space of a second of each other in any other international competitions. Absolutely fantastic. And proof that this really is the very best of the best in terms of the talented racing drivers at this level around the world. And the future of world motorsport from Formula One to IndyCar to DTM to TCR to the world of the Le Mans 24 hours could all be represented here on this very grid here at the Catatromo Lucas Guerrero in Chivas. Valencia. It is an amazing spectacle and it's going to be going not only for today but for all of tomorrow as well. And we will crown an ultimate Winter Cup champion in the IAMI X30 Tour and it will be an amazing scene. We'll crown four champions but we've got another 36 hours to get there. So we will get ourselves ready as the whistle goes in the pits. The mechanics are now clearing the grid so that the drivers led out by Arnold Malizia and Mark Kimber will be able to give us a uh, fantastic spectacle around the circuit. We've had, as we said, some amazing races so far. Four different winners in Senior X30, and one of those is uh, on the starting grid for this one. Sam McDonnell, who lines up on the second row of the grid in behind Arnold Melizia. We've had four different winners, as we've already mentioned, Sam McDonnell being one of them, the other three being Dean McDonald, Joe Turney, and Clayton Ravenscroft, all of British origin. Sam McDonnell is the only one who isn't being Irish. But uh, it will be interesting to see if Arnold Militia from pole position, the Frenchman, who's been very strong over one lap, is going to be impressive enough to take a victory in this next Senior X30 heat. Ten laps on the clock once again, and it will be interesting to see who gets the best draw from these qualifying heats. They're all trying to get themselves, obviously, into the A final ready for tomorrow because, obviously, every race that the drivers do now could dictate whether they stay or they go home a day early. So they've got to put in as good a job as they possibly can to make sure that they are still in competition uh, through the course of Sunday. So the mechanics are clearing the grid. The uh, spectators are getting into their vantage points uh, above the cafe to the uh, left side of the circuit. At the final turn, there's a lot of spectators and mechanics there as well. And of course, on the pit wall, the uh, mechanics and engineers are positioning themselves so that they can give good guidance to the drivers up and down the pit lane. But it is going to be an interesting one as the clouds are starting to come over again. It's a very interesting atmosphere that we have here at uh, Valencia. In the middle of the day when the sun is able to be uh, unclouded, then it is incredibly hot here as it tends to be in Spain. But when the clouds come over, first thing in the morning and late in the evening, it is incredibly cold. Do not forget, of course, that we are quite close to the coast here in southeast Spain. And uh, it is February, so even in this part of the world, it gets incredibly cold at night with temperatures dropping as low as four on Friday. Uh, they're set to drop to about six degrees uh, this evening. So again, it will be very cold. And that means that the circuit can be quite cool uh, through the course of the day. It will certainly be at its most cool uh, uh, we've had since the morning uh, at this particular point because we've had some decent cloud cover overhead. Uh, I did check the weather forecast this morning. It said there's about a 10% chance of rain. If you looked at those clouds over the hill over turn one, then you probably say it's a bit more than that. But I don't really expect those clouds to break into a proper rain shower. I think we'll be okay, just quite cold over the course of the day. But that, of course, is perfect karting weather to get good lap times down. Uh, the tyres won't get quite as hot as they would normally. And uh, they have been getting quite hot in the midday. If you walk the circuit, you'll notice there's quite a lot of rubber on the... Uh, off the racing line as it were and if you look even more closely just to the edge of the circuit you'll even find the remains of a chain or two it's a bit of a cart breaker this circuit don't forget two long straights the back straight that leads into those fast right flicks and then that short chicane that leads into it again the very very long home straight which uh, you have to go a little bit of a jink to the right on the way down to the braking zone for turn one. And it's a very technical circuit. You have to be very careful where you position the cart a lot of the time. You have to get on the power at exactly the right moment. And with these tight apexes and flowing corners, it can be a little bit deceptive as to when you get that ultimate pull on the throttle. You have to be very careful, especially coming out of that final chicane. You'll learn all about that if you're watching and listening at home because we're about to do it all again. It's race number nine of 22 today to decide who will go through to Sunday to the A finals and the B finals of each of the four classes, starting with the Senior X30, qualifying heat D and E. So it's time for the speculation to cease and time for the race action to recommence in earnest. It's been an amazing day so far and we've had some absolutely spectacular battles. Not everybody's day has been blissful. Some has been incredibly hard, but 
One thing we do know for sure is that the battle for victory will never relent. It will be an amazing charge all the way through to the victory. And several of these drivers are on the run to something pretty special. You know that anybody within the top 10, even potentially the top 20 of each of these grids is headed for greatness one day. Don't forget that over the last 20 years of uh, British and international karting, particularly at this level, you'll see many drivers who have gone on to make very famous names for themselves. Even in the last 10 years, don't forget, international competitions such as these have provided us with the talents such as Esteban Ocon, uh, Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, and even potentially Max Verstappen, of course, who no, only about three years ago was competing in competitions such as this. So it's an interesting one, but maybe some of these kids could be on the Formula One grid within the next four or five years. It's doable, even at Senior X30 level, when perhaps you're not quite as young as the Lando Norrises of this world, but it is still achievable, and all these guys know it. So they're going to form up on the grid once again. So let's talk you through the grid once more. Milizia and Kimber on the front row. McDonnell and Westover on the second. Brown Nutley and Boris Cotes on the third. Rundqvist and Pescador on the fourth. Bayart and Laws on the fifth. Ang and Martinez Escria on the sixth. Then it's Lock, Jani, De Grand and Godefroid. Bello and Vea. Olsen and Palomo. Gilliland and Giraud. Percival and Brown. Wooldridge and Veltonen. Someone else and Wada. Scott and Van der Westerlaken, Nutson, Jung, Tomalin, and Honrad. So the drivers now form up in position, and it's going to be an interesting one. Who is going to get the victory for the fifth X30 senior heat of the day? It will be a tough one, and the drivers know they're going to have to work incredibly hard. They're on the back straight, ready for action once again. What a beautiful circuit this Cartodromo Lucas Guerrero provides us with. The racing is fantastic here in Valencia. And we're going to see another magnificent battle here on this magnificent, dusty, twisting, technical challenge of a circuit. Out of the final chicane, Milizia is on the left-hand side of the circuit. Mark Kimber on the right-hand side. They form up in formation. They make sure they stick between the white lines. Away we go, and it's not a bad start from the evens. To be fair, Mark Kimber should be in about third or fourth by the time he gets to the first corner. But once again, those at the front of the odds are able to get further forward. Mark Kimber carries the speed around the outside and will remain in fourth position. Not quite where he wanted to be, but not a bad start. Is there going to be a jostle? Yes, there is, and there's a little bit of fisticuffs in turn three and four. Or there usually is. That's where it all kicks off on the first lap. And we've got one or two of them who have gone off the circuit and rejoined. So it looks as though we may be handing out a couple of five-second penalties for front fairings. But everybody ultimately is still circulating right the way down to the man at the back of the field. Who looks to me, unfortunately, to be the two... 31, I think, is in the mix there at the back, and that is Jensen Brown, who's already having a miserable afternoon and is trying to work his way further forward again. Out in front, though, it's an interesting battle, and it's led by the Frenchman, Arnold Milizia, who's having a really interesting battle early on. Sam McDonald trying to get in there, though. Up and over the curbs they come, and over the start-finish line, and leading the way, it is the 288 of Sam McDonald. So McDonald leads for Milizia, Brown Nutley, Pescador, Laws, Boris Cotes, Kimber, down to seventh now. Rundqvist, Bayard, and Martinez Escria. So Sam McDonald leading the way. Second position is the Frenchman, Arnold Milizia. It's starting to tone down a little bit, but we've got a battle as up the inside goes Jordan Brown Nutley. And Brown Nutley in a second position. No problems there. Arnold Milizia comes back at him. And straight through is Pescador going to get the move on the inside now as well. Brown Nutley puts his hand in the air as if to say, come on, that was a little bit harsh, wasn't it? I don't think so. Jordan Brown Nutley now dives up the inside and Pescador's going to go through as well. Pescador through in the third position and also through goes Henry Laws. So Henry Laws up in a P4. This is more like it for Henry Laws. He'll be particularly motivated after going off at turn three in the first race and retiring on the spot. Now we know what he can do and he's going to prove it. So across we go. Good start to the race, though, from Sam McDonnell. He wants to make it two. He wins out of two. But here comes Jordan Brown Nutley tightening up. Pescador's in there. Laws is fourth. Uh, Arnold Milizia is going to try and make the move back on the inside and moves into fourth position. Trying to get through into fifth place goes Enrique Brothers Cotes and doesn't make the move stick. Terrific racing thus far, though, and it's getting incredibly exciting. Good battles in the midfield still as the drivers battle away all the way through the grid. Arnold Milizia having got back into fourth position in front of Henry Laws. Then in sixth place is Enrique Bodas Cotes. Uh, no, it was, but now Mark Kimber has got back through into sixth position. There goes Henry Laws up into fourth position. And Kimber's going to try and get past Arnold Milizia as well. And he's through. Good move there from Mark Kimber. That was the latest possible overtaking move you could make on that corner. But Kimber is through and up in a P5. 
So McDonnell, Brown Nutley and Jorge Pescador. That is your order at the moment. Jordan Brown Nutley came so close to the victory in his earlier heat. Now he wants to get the job done and he'll have to beat Sam McDonnell in a straight race to do so. But Jorge Pescador is a man on a mission on home soil. He wants to get this done. So Jorge Pescador in third position, chasing down Jordan Brown Nutley and our race leader Sam McDonnell. Fourth position though, still looking good for Mark Kimber in front of Henry Laws now. So Mark Kimber is on the fight back. Henry Law is going with him. Sixth place on a militia. Then it is Nicolas Bayart. Nicolas Bayart has got himself up into seventh position. Good fight back from the Belgian. But now he's got a bit of a battle on his hands with uh, Enric, Carl, uh, Enric Bodas Cotes. Carlos Martinez Escria is in that lot as well. And uh, rounding out the top ten at the moment is Patrick Rundqvist in front of Jason Lockwood, Louis Westover, Oscar Palomo and Jacob Ang. What a disappointment it's been so far though for Louis Westover from the second row of the grid. Westover now finds himself all the way down in twelfth. Palomo's 13th from Jacob Ang, Matilda Olsen, Hugo Vaart, William Goodefoid, Shani, Giraud, Gilliland, Wildrich, Degrand, Van der Westerlaken and Valtonen. Up the inside, here comes Jordan Brown Nutley for the lead and he takes it beautifully. Sam McDonald decides to slot back in and allow the race to flow from him. So now Jordan Brown Nutley will do the hard work and cut through the air. There he goes, through three and four. And it looks pretty tight in between uh, Kimber in fourth, Laws in fifth, and Arnold Militia in sixth position as well. Good battles. So here come the top three. No problems at all. Jordan Brown Nutley in front of Sam McDonald and Jorge Pescador. Good run to the back straight. They go down the short stretch up towards the left-hand hairpin. Tucking through to the right. No major dramas at the moment. Everybody hustling themselves so far. And despite that little fisticuffs at turn three, everybody has gone through pretty much together. And there's no major damage and certainly no retirements at this moment. All 34 are still running. Oh, well, I say 34. It looks as though we've lost Antoine Perceval and Luis Beloso. But I didn't see what happened to them. I certainly can't see their carts stranded anywhere on the circuit. So I wonder if they even made the start. Down the straight, 238. Trying to make the overtaking move into the first corner. Let's see if that's going to work for Enrique Bordes Cotes. And I think he has indeed made the move stick. So, yes, Enrique Bordes Cotes goes through. Mark Kimber, meanwhile, is closing in on the top three as Jordan Brown Nutley is in front and Jorge Pescador is now in second place. So, Pescador up in the second position. McDonald displaced the third, and that's giving Kimber a run at them. So, Mark Kimber will take advantage of that. Meanwhile, it is uh, in eighth position behind uh, Enric Bodas Cotes and behind Orna Malizia is Nicolas Bayart in eighth place. Rundqvist, Martinez Escria, Westover, Lockwood, Palomo, Ang, and Hugo Vaya. Good battles everywhere you look. And in the top four, and it is top four now, it was top three. Mark Kimber has caught them up. Jorge Pescador now going to try and have a look at Jordan Brown Nutley, but Brown Nutley moves the cut slightly across to the right, and that's enough to stop Pescador coming through. But this is a good run from McDonnell and from Mark Kimber. In fact, Kimber's going for the lead at the same time as Pescador goes for the lead. Pescador goes for the lead. Kimber goes through in a third. And that drops both Brown Nutley to second and McDonnell to fourth. Laws has still got Arnold Militia for company. But if those four at the front keep battling, it could become a six-way fight for the victory. Jorge Pescador leads in Valencia. So Pescador for the... Uh, Praga Espana team leads out in front. Jordan Brown Nutley in second position doing a fine job and still plenty of time to go in this one. Four laps to go, including this one. Up the inside, there you go. Jordan Brown Nutley's back through. And up the inside, McDonald makes the move on Kimber. Kimber holds it round the outside. Still trying to hold it round the outside and shuts the door. Mark Kimber holds onto it. Very nicely done there in third position. But they've lost a bit of ground now to Brown Nutley and Pescador. They've got to hope that Pescador is going to make the move for the overtake. But they managed to close up under breaking, so Kimber's right back in the mix on the back of Jorge Pescador. Brown Nutley, Pescador, Kimber, and McDonald. Here goes Kimber, makes the move on the inside, and gets through past Jorge Pescador. Pescador tries to come back on the undercut, but doesn't make the move stick. So Jordan Brown Nutley leads. Kimber second, Pescador third, and fourth place is Sam McDonald. Arnold Militia, by the way, has just got past Henry Laws, and back on the inside now. McDonald gets up in a third position in front of Jorge Pescador. So a lap ago, Pescador was leading. Now he's down to fourth position. Great scrapping further back as drivers jostling for position, knowing they need to do the absolute maximum they can from this race. Malizia is fifth, Laws is sixth, then it's Boris Cotes, Rundqvist, Westover's up to ninth now, ahead of Palomo, ahead of Nicolas Bayard, and ahead of Jason Lockwood. Terrific scrapping all around the circuit as drivers do or die as much as they possibly can to try and gain the uppercut. 
They're about to go into the penultimate lap of this race and up the inside, that's John Brown Nutley going sideways off the curbs and that's enough to let the man in front now, Mark Kimber, get a break. Jordan Brown Nutley will drop to the tail of the field, uh, the tail of that little group, down to fourth position and that's what happens when you run a little bit sideways but Jordan Brown Nutley's not done yet. Kimber is leading, McDonnell is second, third is Pescador and fourth is Jordan Brown Nutley from Arnold Militia and Henry Laws and both of those two, Militia and Laws, are closing up on the leaders. The seventh place battle is pretty intense too. And it's led, I believe, is that Louis Westover now? I think it is. Louis Westover's got up into the lead of that little battle behind them. Four-way scrap for seventh. They could end up being part of the lead battle if this keeps going. We're on lap eight. Uh, sorry, we're on lap nine out of ten. Two laps to go. And down the back straight. Sam McDonald trying to chase down Mark Kimber. Jordan Brown Nutley has got past Jorge Pescador. And that puts him into third position, but we've got one more lap as they come into the chicane. Jordan Brown Nutley needs a good exit to get on terms with these two. McDonald's going to go for it. They're going to work together, these two, to try and get away and then make the run on the back straight, I think, is what Sam McDonald is going to gesture to his man in front there. Henry Laws trying to close up on the leaders. Arnold Milizia has already done that. The Frenchman is now in fifth behind Jorge Pescador. Great racing down the main straight. Even in the midfield and the tail end, we've still got some great battles all around the circuit. But the leaders are getting a really bit of an intense one now. Mark Kimber leading. Second, Sam McDonald. Third is Jordan Brown Nutley. Arnold Militia trying to have a go at Jorge Pescador and running out of space. Henry Laws might just get an opportunity here. If Pescador and Militia keep going, he might get a chance at P4. In fact, they are battling, but the leaders are together. I think Sam McDonald is not quite going to get on terms with Mark Kimber. I think he's left the charge a little bit too late. The checkered flag is being prepared and it's going to be for Mark Kimber. Into the right, into the left, into the right again and on the home straight. And Mark Kimber's going to get it. Kimber wins. Second for McDonald, third for Jordan Brown Nutley. Pescador, Militia and Henry Laws. And what about that for seventh my goodness Henry Bordescotas just beats Oscar Palomo to the line from Westover and Rundqvist Nicholas Bayart is 11th from Jason Lockwood Jacob Ang Carlos Martinez Escria uh, then we have William Godefroy Christopher Shani Enzo Giraud and Hugo Ver the three Frenchmen together from 16th to 18th then Ben Wildridge and rounding out the top 20 Sebastian de Grand of Belgium Isaac Valtonen is 21st from Jensen Brown Matilda Olsen not having as good a run that time Matthew Gillenand in 24th Rivaldo van der Westerlaken, Robin Knutson, Jack Tomalin, Simon Enrard, Rico Samanotio, Boris Young, Kira Scott, Masatora Wada, and then we lost, unfortunately, Antoine Perceval and Luis Beloso in the early stages. But what a truly spectacular victory for Mark Kimber. He has done the business there. So Mark Kimber wins a truly stunning race. Did somebody just cut around half the circuit there? I think they did. Use the access road. I wonder if their cart was breaking down and they suddenly realized they were not quite going to make it all the way back home. So uh, they decided to come into the pits a little bit earlier rather than break down halfway around the circuit. So uh, that's how they've done that. But uh, a victory in the end for Mark Kimber. And that makes him the fifth different Senior X30 winner in five races. How competitive is this one? Really, really good stuff.